In this part, we'll be looking at CT sections of the brain, showing the ventricular system. In particular, we'll be looking at hydrocephalus, which is the enlargement of the ventricular system due to a buildup of CSF. There are actually two sections to show you. One is the sagittal and one coronal. The one you see in front of you is the sagittal section, where if you take, divide the person into two halves, right and left. So let's start from the top, the lateral ventricle. As you can plainly see here, the C-shaped lateral ventricle. And here it is quite dilated. If you remember, it had three parts, a anterior part, posterior and inferior part which enters into the temporal lobe which is not visible here. It's actually more visible at this point. You can see how the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle is entering into the temporal lobe. So this entirety of the lateral ventricle is dilated and when it comes to hydrocephalus there are actually three types. The non-communicating, communicating and the normal pressure type. So. Uh, it's unclear at why this, uh, if this is the communicating type or non-communicating, but uh, again, when non-communicating would mean that there's an obstruction at certain point. In particular, when the lateral ventricle communicates with the third ventricle at the foramen of interventricular foramen of Monroe. So, if there was a blockage there, that would explain why this is dilated. On the other hand, if we go down, here we can appreciate, here's the inferior horn, posterior anterior horn, here we're coming to the third ventricle. And right over here, if you can appreciate here, here we see the cerebellum, you can see the characteristic uh, shape and arbor vitae and the medulla and pons here. This right here, this diamond shape is your fourth ventricle and here you can see it's quite normal, even the cerebral aqueduct. So that means that the obstruction is not distal to this but proximal which is affecting the lateral and the third ventricle. Looking at it from a coronal section, let's see this here, here we go. Here you can see those two anterior parts, well actually more the body of the lateral ventricles and they're quite dilated, one more than the other. If we go forward, you can see how they meet in the midline. If you recall the boundaries, the lateral ventricle is has a roof formed by the corpus callosum and down here we have the caudate nucleus if you go for the back side it'll be the thalamus here you can see the septum pellucidum two parts and in between will be the space if you go further back the third ventricle and as i'm going down you can see the third ventricle will then here we go here you can see the intraventricular foramen of monroe how the lateral ventricle communicates with the third ventricle and here the third ventricle is also dilated. It's not usually this large. And once again, you can see how the thalamus on the side, although they're not demarcated, but here we have the thalamus forming the lateral boundaries of the third ventricle. And as I go further down, we can appreciate a bit of the cerebellum on the back, since this is a coronal section. So here you can see the fourth ventricle and it's quite normal here. There's no enlargement. This is the same CT scan except this is the coronal section. It is only the lateral and the third which are dilated. And I believe this is a bit of the projections of the choroidal plexus. Remember that all three have choroidal plexus in the lateral, in the third and in the fourth. And they were just merely blood vessels which were pushing through the pia matter and the ependyma which is the inner layer of the uh, ventricles and it is through them that CSF was produced. Let's see once again, lateral, third and fourth. And the last one, the normal section, axial. This time we're looking at it from the bottom. And this is the sections coming from top to bottom. So if you start from the top, here we go. Here's the top. Here once again, the lateral ventricles dilated, C-shaped, anterior, body, posterior, inferior is not visible here. You can see how they meet at the midline, right over here. Corpus callosum is on the roof on top of it. And on the back side is the formation of the cerebellum. At this point, we are coming down further down. And you can see actually, because it's a C shape, that's why it's discontinuous here. We're looking at the posterior horn on the back. At this point, it more probably be the inferior horns. And up in front, the 
lateral ventricles communicating with the third. As we go further down here, you can appreciate the septum pellucidum. And here is the third ventricle. And from here on, the third ventricle, you can see it is simply isolated in the center with a thalamus on the side, but it's still too large. There's still hydrocephalus here. You can appreciate a very nice midbrain right over here. Here you can see the superior colliculi. And as we go even further down, the cerebral aqueduct will be narrow because, as I said, that here, the cerebral aqueduct is located right at this junction because here you can see the brainstem here and the cerebellum right, sorry, right over here between the cerebellum and the brainstem. Everything is normal in the cerebral aqueduct and fourth ventricle. So this was basically how you can pick these things up on CT. And hydrocephalus, once again, is usually congenital, but it can be acquired due to injuries or infections.